called as pre envelope what is this pre envelope hilbert transform of a signal is defined for both positive and negative frequencies okay since uh, the phase reversal takes place for both positive and negative frequencies that is for plus 90 degree as well as minus 90 degree in both the positive and negative axes the phase reversal would be taking place in clockwise as well as anti clockwise direction you might not be knowing in which direction it is taking the reversal of phase so it is uh, uh, defined for both positive as well as negative frequencies how to modify frequency content of a real valued signal g of t such that all negative frequency components are completely eliminated now this is the question here how to modify the frequency component because whenever the phase reversal takes place and whenever we have one fixed amplitude the frequency obtained from those signals won't be fixed okay that frequency would be varying the how to modify that frequency content of a real valued signal g of t now how to uh, control that frequency such that all the negative frequency components are completely elimin eliminated so now here our goal is to eliminate all the negative frequency components when we talk about eliminating the frequency components you would be keep you should be keeping in mind that to eliminate frequency components there is one circuit there is one term okay if you try to recall it that term it, it is called as envelope detector which we have studied in principles of communication systems please try to recall it because all these things are interconnected digital communication principles of this is the basics is only required for this subject of pcs which you have studied in fourth okay so please uh, try to recall it uh, envelope detector okay that is one circuit which you have studied it in of pcs that envelope detector circuit is required to remove all the negative frequency components of a real valued signal in order to make it a stable signal okay let us consider complex valued signal called pre envelope of g of t defined by this is the way the pre envelope is defined that is g plus of t why we have written only g plus of t because we are considering only the positive frequencies and negative frequency components are completely eliminated using the circuit called as envelope detector g plus of t is equal to g of t plus j g cap of t this is called as hilbert transform which i have already discussed that is g cap of t is hilbert transform of the function g of t okay that is the real valued signal which we have considered here now according to this given signal g of t given signal g of t is the real part of the pre envelope and g plus of t and h of t that is hilbert transform of uh, uh, sorry hilbert transform g cap of t is the imaginary part of the pre envelope that is you can see that this is the real part and this is the imaginary part of this pre envelope right g of t is the real part and g cap of t that is the hilbert transform of this g of t is the imaginary part now the important feature of this uh, pre envelope g plus of t is the behavior of its fourier transform okay in the first session uh, i have uh, recalled it about the sub concept called as fourier transform right so please try to recall it let g plus of f okay now we are representing this g plus uh, pre envelope in frequency domain okay considering the positive frequencies let g plus of f is equal to g of f plus s g n of f that is a uh, uh, S G N of F into G of F, that is G plus of F, is having three values. That is, it is two times of G of F. Whenever the frequency is greater than zero, that is, whenever the frequency is positive, it is a G of zero when frequency is equal to zero, and it is zero when frequency is less than zero because we know that all the negative components, frequency components, are eliminated, so it would be completely nullified. Okay, so this is G plus of F in uh, different uh, cases. Now to determine g plus of t that is pre envelope in the time domain of the given signal g of t time domain procedure okay that is g plus of t is equal to g of t plus j into g cap n of t okay this is the uh, det determination of g plus of t in time domain this is the formula you should be keeping in mind okay now frequency domain procedure now this is a very interesting part here frequency domain procedure first we need to find the fourier transform ft of g of f of signal g of t then we should be finding the g plus of f in frequency domain okay is equal to g of f plus sgn of f into g of f finally get the inverse fourier transform of this g plus of f that is 
g plus of t is equal to 2 times of 0 to infinity since the limits here are from minus infinity to infinity we know that we can even write this minus infinity to infinity as 2 times of 0 to infinity okay since all the negative frequency components are eliminated so that's why if we consider this line here of this is minus infinity and this is plus infinity and this is 0 all these negative components are eliminated and this all this components here would be shifted to the positive side so if we shift this minus infinity to 0 to this side this would be 2 times of 0 to infinity so that's why you are representing it as g plus of t plus stands for all the positive frequency components 2 times of 0 to infinity g of f e power j 2 pi f t d f i have written it as exp because in the textbook it is given as exp so that's why i have written it you can even write this as e power j 2 pi f t this is one and the same exp of j 2 pi f t or e power j 2 pi f t d f okay yeah so now let's discuss about the pre envelope of the negative frequency when the free negative frequencies are not eliminated and kept at as it is okay what are, what and all are the changes here in the pre envelope pre envelope of negative frequency that is g minus of t is equal to g of t minus j g cap of t two pre envelopes g plus of t and g minus of t are complex conjugates of each other this relation you should be keeping in mind because if you know this relation the problems or the theoretical part you, you, you can uh, uh, easily remember that is two pre envelopes g plus of t whenever we eliminate the negative frequency components and g minus of t whenever we eliminate the positive frequency component or we can consider both positive and negatives uh, at the same time are complex conjugates of each other that is g plus of t is equal to g, star, g minus of t is equal to g star plus of t that is g minus of f it is complex conjugate so whenever frequencies are greater than zero or frequencies are positive it is zero because when we consider the negative frequency all the positive frequencies are eliminated it is zero if, when if frequency equal to zero this is g of zero and when, whenever the frequency is less than zero or frequency is negative it is two times of g of f okay now note this one point here the spectral content of a Fourier transformable real valued signal for positive frequencies uniquely defines the signal the spectral content means the uh, what to say the signal uh, variation the variation in the signal okay uh, in the frequency domain as well as time domain of a Fourier transformable real value signal for all positive frequencies are uni uniquely defines the signal that is uh, whenever we eliminate all the negative frequencies and when we keep only the positive frequencies in a signal the signal is said to be in a completely stable state without any formation of errors and uh, the signal would be in a smooth fa fashion so this was all about this pre envelope which i have discussed in brief here okay so please pause the video and refer it in brief i have discussed pre envelope how it is related to the Hilbert transform, how to modify the frequency content by eliminating the negative frequency and keeping the positive frequency and how the how is how, how it is the relationship between the frequency component and uh, a pre envelope and uh, how it is uh, behavior, behaving if we consider the Fourier transformable and to determine the pre envelope in time domain as well as frequency domain all of them we have discussed. So let us get started now. Complex envelope of a band pass signal. Okay, what so what do you mean by this complex envelope? Complex envelope is applied to the band pass signals only when the signals are Fourier transformable. So this is this one condition here for this complex envelope that the signal must be Fourier transformable. Then only you could be applying the complex envelope in order to be increasing the spectrum of the signal. Okay, pre envelope is only related to low pass and high pass signals, whereas complex envelope envelopes are related to band pass signals. Okay. So in the previously under pre envelope we had studied one thing which was common that is it was only for low pass and high pass signals with respect to low pass and high pass filters right. So whereas this complex envelope if you compare it with the pre envelope these complex envelopes are related only to band pass signals okay band pass signals means the frequency is generated in bands so with respect to high and low frequencies the, it is given. The whatever the band frequency is obtained it would be operating in that region itself okay so that's why they are uh, related to band pass signals band pass signals are exemplified by signals modulated onto the sinusoidal carrier that is if f s of t is an uh, am wave that is the amplitude modulated wave 
then s of t is equal is given as a by 2 cos 2 pi f c t plus a by 2 cos 2 pi f c plus f m that is the carrier frequency and modulated frequency into t plus a by 2 cos 2 pi f c plus f m okay so if you simplify this you would be getting s of t is equal to a by 2 cos 2 pi f c t plus a m of t cos 2 pi f c t where m of t is the message signal with respect to the modulated and carrier frequencies obtained okay so this is for s of t now now for this signal generated if we apply the Fourier transform by applying the Fourier transform we get s of f in frequency domain that is a by 2 into delta of f minus fc plus delta of f plus fc plus a by 2 into m of f that is m of t is uh, replaced m of f in Fourier transform delta of f minus fc plus delta of f minus fc if you compare in these two terms the delta of f minus fc and f plus delta of f plus fc are common right so that indicates that the amplitude is getting divided equally in both the spectrums of high high frequency as well as low frequency so that's why the band frequency would be obtained and the amplitude for that is given by the factor of a by 2 okay so that's why we'll be getting this final term for s of f that is s of f is equal to a by 2 into delta of f minus fc plus delta of f plus fc plus a by 2 into m of f minus fc plus m of f plus fc where the message signal whatever is generated that would be getting multiplied with the two frequency spectrum bands generated for high frequency and low frequency in order to get the complete band frequency okay so so that's why this with respect to the equation in Fourier domain we would be getting the band pass signal spectrum in such a way that from origin we should be doing the s of f main signal and we would be dividing the spectrum into two parts one is for negative and one is for positive and in this region and in this particular region the band signal is getting transmitted okay so that's why we are having for the negative amplitude the frequencies are fc minus fc minus fm minus fc and minus fc plus fm and for the positive far part is fc minus fm fc and fc plus fm okay so this is a by 4 region where it is the half of this amplitude a by 2 okay so this is the spectrum whatever you get under complex envelope here bandwidth of s of t is 2 omega for both the cycles okay so you are having two cycles as i have told you one is for negative region and one is for positive region combining together for this cycle it is omega for this cycle it is omega if we combine the complete spectrum we would be getting 2 omega for both the cycles okay therefore signal generated s of t under sinusoidal carrier can be represented as a narrow band signal okay why it can be called as a narrow band signal because it is transformable in both the cycles positive as well as negative so that's why it can, it can be represented as a narrow band signal okay so now pre envelope of a narrow band signal is given by s plus of t is equal to s negation of t or uh, s complex of t into e to the power exponential it can also be written as e to the power okay exponential of j 2 pi c t where this s negation of t is a complex envelope of the narrow band signal okay so in this way complex envelope signals are represented complex envelope s negation of t which is limited to minus omega to plus omega totally of 2 omega so equivalent low pass band pass signal for the complex envelope part is given by this spectrum here that is S negation, uh, S negation of f in frequency domain okay and if you divide it you will be getting for two cycles one is for negative and positive so that's why you will be getting two times magnitude of s of f and the limits are from minus omega to omega okay so this is the final spectrum for a complex enveloped signal S negation of t okay under frequency domain it is represented like this so hope the complex envelope part is clear so these are the things you need to be noting down